and welcome to Politics 2.0, continuing coverage in the Net News Ledger newsroom. We're here today with Councillor Frank Pullia. Councillor Pullia is a councillor at large in the city of Thunder Bay. He is also the youth and child advocate and just recently had a town hall meeting to discuss community safety. Frank, welcome to the newsroom. Thank you for the opportunity to converse with uh, the uh, community of Thunder Bay. Now, the town hall meeting that you had, the, the issue of community safety, which is a very, very important issue for the city, was discussed. What would you like to share? What are your thoughts following the town hall that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, first of all, it was the need for having that type of conversation. It was a first step in a community conversation and engagement. Just to put it out there, it's something that I believe we need to start talking about it a little more so we can get a better understanding of what is happening in Thunder Bay. As you know, there's emerging issues. Uh, community safety is, has been around for, for a while, but recently there's something else happening. Uh, our protective services are now responding to 20 to 30 percent more calls on opiates, abuse, and uh, um, use, and other uh, health-related issues because we have an aging population, and therefore we, Council, provided an extra ambulance and funding for seven more paramedics. But I, we, we get the sense that it may not be enough. We need to better understand what is going on so we can have that clear, focused effort in being proactive and not reactive when these things are happening. Our social determinants of health are changing. We need to know how and why and what can we do about it. It's an interesting process. I've occasionally listened to the EMS scanner and the number of calls for respiratory distress in the city, which I suppose comes out of our industrial past with the grain elevators, the paper mills. There's a lot of those calls and you also then will see a full response to someone who's suffering from an addiction issue. Uh, this week I went down to downtown uh, North Ward and right at the corner of Red River Road and Algoma was a man down who had taken the uh, crack and he passed out on the, on the corner of the street and EMS was there to uh, assist him. But it's, it's a growing issue in the city and you know it creates a lot of frustration I'm sure for the paramedics and for the police as well. Not only that, for our citizens, I hear it all the time. People phone us, email, concerned about what is happening in terms of, at times, the inability of our police forces to react to a break-in into a car. Mm -hmm. Because the response is, we got more other issues that have um, higher priority, like breaking into a house. And so there's a lot of frustration. And I know that even our police forces are frustrated because it's not just a question of putting more money. We added an extra million dollar in the police budget last year. But I believe that money alone will not solve the problem. We have to go to a proactive mode. Mm -hmm. The police response is a reactive mode. It's after the fact. They react, they can only do so much other than investigating and solving the crime. We need to concentrate more of our resources and energies in understanding the collective efforts of many community organizations. And there are many who are doing fantastic job, good work. I attended some of the most recent conversations and, and uh, meetings from the Thunder Bay Drug Strategy. Mm -hmm. There was one the other day that talked about some of these issues and the use of opiates and other drug-related things are skyrocketing. And it's not unique to Thunder Bay. I mean, this is happening everywhere in North America. But we need to take care of our community. And I believe that being proactive and having those type of conversation and bring awareness what it needs to be so we have a better understanding where the gaps are mm -hmm. and can lobby the other orders of government to allocate resources where they are needed the most. Now, as you're consulting and gathering information, what are you seeing as possible solutions? Well, again, that um, we need to go one step higher in the community collaboration. 
um, eliminate any silos. Lateral collaboration is going to be key and going to the prevention aspect of it, which includes homelessness, yeah. poverty, addiction is big. Like those other, we got some major problems, drug use, um, and all those issues that are related to to bring in the react to bring in the incidents yeah. where the police has to respond to OSS program. Mm -hmm. So we need to get a better handle on that and using technology, whatever is possible. The eSafe, you asked the eSafe uh, conversation, mm -hmm. my last town hall meeting was to focus on the technology that we currently have. Yes that can be used always in to support people. It has to be people-centric. Technology is only a tool, is how we use it. For example, if a kid goes missing, there is in place a protocol, there is a manual protocol, who does what, when and how, who calls whom to act and do a search for this kid. Some of those functions can be now, you know, can be done electronically, yeah. much faster. There's predictive analytics that can almost tell you in advance where the risk is starting to increase in any particular group. And therefore you can put in place support mechanism, especially for youth, yeah. if you know they're missing school, if you know they're hanging out in the wrong place with the wrong crowds. There are systems in place right now, but what I'm saying is let's make them more efficient, mm -hmm. lower cost, support the people you need to support, have better results. We need to start focusing on those better results, better outcomes for the youth, for the community at large, for the citizens who now feel vulnerable and they don't feel that their tax dollars are going in the right place to protect yeah. them. That's the perception. That's what I'm hearing from our citizens. Now, shifting gears a little bit, uh, <clears throat> we couldn't get you on a skateboard this week. We'd, we uh, ran into you down at the, the skate park at, at Prince Arthur's Landing, but you were able to help the youth who are down there, the young people, and, and the older people as well, older youth, the skaters. The, the park was covered in snow, and as the youth and child advocate, you got involved, and you found a solution fairly quickly. I want to talk about that a little bit. Sure. When I saw the video of, uh, I think you were taking that video there, of the skate park at the marina, of this uh, young man shoveling away like one acre of snow two feet high and I said, you'll never make it. Yeah. One person alone, uh, I phoned uh, the, our dispatch at the uh, city of Thunder Bay for parks to see if there were any crews. Unfortunately, it was the weekend and there was a, uh, we were predicting snow so they couldn't react right away. Um, but they did yesterday and and luckily the timing was right because we haven't had that much snow so equipment and the personnel were available and they were able to go and clear the some of the mm -hmm. uh, you know some of the snow and also some of the ice that had formed in the bottom and with the beautiful weather we have had it's now basically melted whatever was left and the skate skate park is fully functional and the other one was that yesterday uh, there were dozens of youth that were already enjoying themselves the great weather we've been having and this is not even the end of March so it worked out well and I wanted to you know say thank you to you for bringing that to our attention thank you to our to our dispatch that get on it right away and our city crews for responding as soon as they were able to and that's something that's probably not really well talked about in the media is that you know, everybody has a complaint, you know, city didn't do this or city didn't do that. It's always the, the big bad city. But often when you make a phone call and you get involved or you send an email, you find out that the city does respond on a lot of these issues. And this was one. You know, the other issue, of course, is potholes. And I'm finding a lot of times that, you know, maybe the city's, the city needs to talk more at the administration level about how to engage with them so that people can get happier. I, I think we do that. We do, um, I mean, I'm very active on social media on both sides to hear the concerns of our citizens, to be accountable as an elected official, to be transparent in our dealings with the community and with management and with my fellow councillors. 
we all communication is key I believe that working together brings forth better outcomes working together really works collaboration in my mind is the key driver towards a better Thunder Bay because there are too many bad news that we hear all the time unfortunately our brains are geared to focus on that I guess is part of our a reactive response to be safe you need to be alerted to what's dangerous out there but we also need to be aware and appreciate all the good things that are happening in Turner Bay there's a lot of good stuff and every chance I get I bring it forward and our greatest strength as a community is our ability to collaborate and volunteer on so many organizations I mean I travel quite a bit and I'm you know, and you can see now with social media, people travel a lot. And I'm always amazed when I go somewhere else and I come back, how um, we can now appreciate the community of Thunder Bay and our amazing heart and the volunteer organization and groups that do tremendous work day in, day out to make our city a better place. So we need to focus, obviously, and be aware with the issues that we need to confront but also appreciate all the good that is happening. And I think that's probably takes us to, you know, why, how we communicate. Mm -hmm. And in terms of NNL, we appreciate your giving us the opportunity to do this today because it's part of that communication and transparency that is so much needed, especially for us elected official in communicating with those who elected us. The thing that I, I really think was special with the skateboard park and the reason I'm, I brought it up was that walking around the park and there was about 30 people last night that were there and watching them realize that they can communicate a problem and it can be solved and and a couple of the kids and I boy they didn't know some of them are in their 20s and they're, I'm not a kid but the truth the youth. is the youth and the younger people are Sometimes they don't get, get as involved in the political process as they might. And I think that little things like that, in a place like Marina Park, which is a safe place in our city for so many of the young people, and it's a fun activity down there. You see the kids on their scooters and on their bikes and on their skateboards, and they're having a lot of fun in a safe environment. And so when they find out that they can actually engage with the city to a solution, it gives me hope for the future. Well, that's the beauty of uh, social media, even though right now it has a bad name. I, it's an, to me, it's another tool. It's how you use it. Do not abuse it. Learn how to use it properly. And in this case, it worked. It worked because I was able to see the video you took. I was able to quickly send an email to Public Works, which anyone can do, publicworks at thunderbay.ca, either being reporting at a pothole or any kind of issues you may have. That information, that complaint, that notice is documented, is part of our dispatching. With that's documented, is logged in, and action is taken. You may not get it right away because we probably get quite a few of those. It's prioritized and responded to as soon as we can. We actually will be getting a report to council soon because we want to know the trends, what kind of calls are coming in, where they're coming in, what is the need there. That kind of feedback loop is something that we need to understand better and make that part of the complaint system not in a negative way, in a positive way because complaining is not negative you're bringing an issue to the attention of the elected official who in turn need that kind of information to be able to represent you you need to be able to do our job of representation it's because of the job of a city councillor or the mayor is not just Monday night the city council making decisions it's day in day out in our interaction with the community. Mm -hmm. When I go to a function, people approach me, they tell me about the problem, the fence, the neighbor, um, drainage issues. Mm -hmm. What I do, quickly get my smartphone, I get their name, phone number, email, send it in to dispatch, and then it's a counselor inquiry, it's a formalized process, gets recorded, and gets a response. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't always solve the problems, but we have acted on it, and we'll provide you a reason why if we can fix it, why we can fix it? Okay. But in most cases, we're able to do something about it. And you've been hosting, you've got the, the town hall that you just had on, on youth and community safety. Now, what's coming up next? What I heard that night was concerns about 
they use a te technology, and it wasn't. And I think what I, what I was trying to bring the conversation to the technology is just a tool. Yeah. It has to be people centric. So there were there are so many other things that we need to put in place, and and have a better understanding about some of the organizations that are already working to support people in need mm -hmm. in Thunder Bay. Therefore, I want to have a next town hall meeting that speaks to, to the need to enhance our social infrastructure mm -hmm. already in relation to community safety. Is the social infrastructure in Thunder Bay at the level that needs to be to support prevention mm -hmm. of the issues of addiction, homelessness, poverty, and crime. Mm -hmm. I think we need to shift the focus from reactive to proactive. Yes. And therefore, uh, before the end of April, I will be having a town hall meeting. I'm just making the final arrangement and bringing the right knowledge and resources on a panel mm -hmm. that we can discuss these things from a position of factual information, solid understanding, and bringing that awareness to our community so everybody's informed so that they know that we are getting a better understanding of the issues and therefore are in a better position to do something about it from a preventive perspective. To me, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We cannot wait, continue to wait and react to the events around us, especially when we're dealing with community safety. From a perspective of the youth and child advocate, I think that's a big area. I need to, I like to do more, yeah. and the first uh, town hall was focused on that, the youth safety, mm -hmm. but I mean, we need to go beyond that and include all the community safety that includes the issues we talked about. I want to know, the community needs to know, we can do it, and collaboration works. And Frank, that is exactly why we have created Politics 2.0 at Net News Ledger. We want to move past the 15 second, the 30 second, the one minute sound bite, and we want to give our community leaders, the candidates, as we move forward in the provincial election and the, and the, and the municipal election coming this fall, a full opportunity to express their ideas openly uh, to our readers, to our viewers, and get that information out there. So I thank you very much for coming in. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate it, and I hope to be able to provide even more insight from our job as a city councillor, your representative working for you. This is James, Politics 2.0 and Net News Ledger. Stay tuned. Thank you, Thunder Bay. Thank you.